it's hard because like people they wanna um they wanna peg you as someone. They wanna put you in a box. They wanna be able to be like, Oh, because you said this, this is who you are and it's like they we're were... all very dynamic. Sure. <laughs> Yo, welcome to Expeditiously. I am your host, Tip T.I. Harris. Now here, uh, what we do is we have discussions uh, that will push the culture and the community forward with people who are relevant to the discussion. And my guest today has quickly become one of the most influential voices in comedy. The Village Voice recently called her the voice comedy needs right now. And Daily Blast declared that she is the future of stand-up comedy. Well, man, those are very high regards. She recently <laughs> served as the executive producer, writer, and host of her weekly half-hour variety sketch series, The Break with Michelle Wolf on Netflix. Without further ado, please welcome, well, I, I guess you kind of figured it out. It's Michelle Wolf. <laughs> What's going on? Hello, how are Thank you? Thank you so much Thank for joining us. Thank you for having us. me. Man, how could I not, man? You tearing it up out there. Thanks, I'm trying to. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I think, uh, so... You, I, I've seen you several times live, um, uh, mostly with Dave, mm -hmm. um, and it's not easy to go out there before and act like Dave and Donnell Rollins and then and still command your own attention. Yeah. How do you find like you know? How do you find yourself able to do that? Uh, I I got lucky. I um I got brought on the road pretty early with like. I've been out with Louie and Rock, and right. uh, we, when I was out with them, we did real big venues. Like, we did arenas. You know, I did Madison Square Garden with Louie. I did Dope. arenas all over the world with Rock, and I think, like, that kind of really set me up to be like, all right, just be confident on stage. Right. As soon as they see you a little scared, <laughs> that's when they know. That's when they, they turn like on you. But, yeah, yeah, it's just, it, I don't know. And then, and then as soon as, I, you know, anytime you're around Dave, you, like, you kind of, I don't know, at least I jump on a little bit of his confidence where it's right. just like he's got this aura that's just like kind of magical I to be around. Figure that. Yeah, and then so you kind of just, I don't know, do your best impression of him. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, as a, so you used to work at Corporate America, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, okay. So now I can actually see you in Corporate America. Like, what were you, like sales or I was, uh, marketing? I, I did, uh, we did, uh, um, what is it called? Oh, we did due diligence ah. on, yeah, yeah, on uh, mutual funds. So okay. I worked with, I worked with brokers to like tell them. I don't know. I really didn't do that much. <laughs> I was more, there's so many people that work at a bank that are just like, you email and you give papers and you right. make copies and <laughs> you hope that everything's okay. Uh, Either it's going to go well or it's not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was always low enough on the totem pole that it was, like, people would blame stuff on me, but, right. like, I wasn't actually going to get in trouble for anything. Because <laughs> someone should have been probably watching known. over you. Yeah, I needed a babysitter. <laughs> <I was> <laughs> now, how do you go from that to saying, you know what, I'm funny? Um... I, uh, well, I still have a hard time believing I'm funny, uh, which I'm sure plenty of people would be like, she isn't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, please. But uh, I, uh, I was, I got a job at Bear Stearns in the summer of 2007, mm -hmm. and Bear Stearns was the first bank to fail in March of 2008. Damn. Yeah, yeah. So it was a fun run. And uh, I, um, around the same time, my friends came to visit me, and I went to a taping of SNL. Okay. I've always been such a huge fan. And after the taping, I was just like, how do these people get into this? Like, how, mm. how do you start this? So I, I just Googled all of them, and they almost all started in improv. Mm. So I just signed up for an improv class. Dope. And after that, it was just like, oh, I just want to do more of this. But so I would like, I'd work at the bank all day, you know, like in a suit, in a skirt, let's be honest, in a skirt suit. That <laughs> <laughs> I got like at Century 20, well, you know, like a real discount. <laughs> and uh, I would go from the bank to improv and mm. I would just. In the same in skirt suit. In the same suit. skirt suit, heels and everything. I really that looked like a, a weird working mom. That, uh, <laughs> that's hilarious that you, that, that juxtaposition from something is. Vanilla and, and dare I say stale as yeah. the bank uh, to to going and actually getting laughs. Like when when you first hit stage, what what said to you, "Hey man, I could do this for the rest of my life." 
it was more like a feeling I got that I was just like, after the first class, I just remember thinking like, I just want to do more of this. Right. I, like that was like, it was, I think before then, I really didn't have much of a personality. I didn't have much of a point of view. Mm. I was kind of just like grinding through life. You know, like I, I always wanted to do well. You know, I worked really hard in school. Right. I did, you know, I was real, real nerd, you know, real type A. But then I got into that. Like I started doing improv and I was like, oh, like <laughs> there's so much more out there. Right. You know, I started to develop a personality, a point of view and like confidence. You have quite a point of view now I, that you mention it. I I have kind of honed it you have throughout quite, the years. <laughs> quite the perspective, <laughs> quite the alternative perspective. And you say that you know you 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 feel like you know society should be a little less woke. Yeah. So what? Is so what? How, how how could I don't think they could get less woke. Well, I really don't. I don't mean it from a black perspective. I mean it more <laughs> from a uh, white people perspective. Okay, well, give me an example of, you know, a, a overly woke white person. Well, it's like the kind of person, I, I mean, I have the joke in my, my special, but the woman who I saw otters, and she was like, you should know otters rape baby seals. And I was like, that's not our problem. I, I, saw, I, I saw that, I said, I can't believe she said that. Yeah. But it's stuff like that where it's just like there's there's you know a lot of white people I would say a lot of white women in general okay. uh, they they want to get offended on behalf of other people mm. and they also want to I call them the head victims in charge <laughs> uh, because they want to claim that things are bad or happening to them but at the same time they may want to make the rules about what you're allowed to joke about what you're allowed to talk about uh. um, you know like. Yeah, it's hard to be sensitive and still, like, enjoy comedy. Yeah. It's very hard. Like, you know what I'm saying? You have to be a real stiff ass to, you know what I'm saying, get offended by by a joke. Yeah, and, like, the people I have a problem with, they're... They're the people that don't want to admit the reality of the situation. Right. You know, like... They, cause they understand that this problem exists. They just don't want to hear you say it. Yeah, they don't want to hear it. And, <laughs> and like, they're just like, no, I know the problem exists, but we're not allowed to talk about it. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Like, you see it with race all the time, where it's just like, there's a lot of white people that are just like, no, 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 don't bring up race. We're not racist. Don't bring it up. And it's like, no, 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 we need to talk about it. Yeah, why not? I, don't, I, I mean, I don't understand, like, you know... I think if we if we can disagree and everyone's mm-hmm. entitled to have their own opinion, uh, but I feel like uh, uh, like positive engagement. Yeah, that's how society progresses. Yeah, we're not allowing the conversations to happen, which will keep us stagnant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it keeps everyone in their own pen, and it also just like you gotta let you gotta let people evolve with their thoughts. Right. You know, like a lot of stuff's happening. A lot of, society's moving pretty quickly, and you gotta allow for people to like. Talk it through even, yeah. you know, just be like, okay, well, this person feels this way. And so that that means this. And it's like, uh, let them, let them have that conversation. Right. Let them catch up. I mean, man, like now would that, would that also, would that also stand true for someone like Gail King who may feel like, Hey, this is a subject. It needs to be spoken about. I think is, is there anything ever that's ever off limits? I mean, I think everyone has to decide what their limit is. Oh, is it because it's it's like straight journalism, not entertainment and not a joke? Is it? Well, I mean, I feel like for jokes, nothing's off limits as long as you have a good enough punchline. Uh, There's those topics where it's like, you're going to go after that. Your punchlines better be man, good. Man, this, be- this shit better hit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're the hardest jokes to do, but they're the most rewarding when they work. Right. But like journalism, stuff like that, it's like a lot of that just feels like because, I mean, I have a lot of problems with journalism, but one of the biggest is that they're trying to make it entertainment. And, right. like, they try to, like, be like, what's the headline question going to be? You mm. know, what's going to spark people's anger or emotions? And, right. Um, instead of actually doing the work. I mean, journalism, yeah, I at the think, end of the day, should be boring. Yeah. I think when you I think when you do it at, at, at someone else's expense. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, you know... You have a uh, you have a journalistic responsibility to cover things, but then you know once you scratch beneath the surface and dwell on things too long, I think that's egregious. Yeah, and like I, I mean, especially with the Gail K- King thing, it's like all we should really be talking about is that uh, 
Kobe became a better man. That's right. Isn't that the whole goal out of all of this? Absolutely. We just want people to be better. Evolve. Yeah. I think uh, I think I've heard. I, I, I interviewed Lou Neal not too long ago, mm -hmm. and you know we were talking about how much more difficult it is for female comedians as it is for male comedians. Mm -hmm. uh, have you ever like experienced anything like that? I mean, I it's hard to say because first of all, I've only ever been a female comedian, so like <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what's harder on the other side. Right. Um, I've also been really lucky. Like I've been, I've had all my my closest friends are you know male comics, and they've right. all been so great to me. Right. Um, like I I mean like I I worked with Louie and Rock really quickly when I was a comic, and they were all really. So how long from the bank? to working with Louis C.K. and Chris Rock? I started doing stand-up. I started doing improv in 2008. I started doing stand-up in around 2011. Mm. And I worked with, uh, I guess I started working with Chris around 2015, 2016. Gotcha. And Louis around 2015 probably too. Mm. Um, I, I wrote on the Oscars with Rock in 2016. That's dope. Yeah. What was that like? Well, first of all, we had a whole monologue, and then they didn't nominate any black people, so we had to write a whole new monologue. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> and I felt bad for him because, like, I think a lot of people expected him to solve racism yeah. in that first but eight did, minutes. <laughs> but did he say? Did he address it at all? He did. He okay. did. That's he was talked about um, talking about how Hollywood was. Uh, it wasn't. It was sorority racist. Oh. Where it's like, um, it's like a. Uh, yeah, you're not like a kappa, you know. Like, it's like you can come here, but you're not like a kappa. Damn. Um, but yeah, it was. Uh, that was amazing. That was such a. It was a good experience. He's great to work man, with. Chris is all. We always have a great time, man. Um, I see him a lot. Or you know, what I'm saying at Dave's functions, mm -hmm. and he's actually one of my favorites. He's my. He's in my top five. Yeah. How about you? What? Who's your top five comedians? Um. Let's see. It would say Dave, mm -hmm. Louie. Rock, um, probably Bill, Bill mm. Burr, and... Bill Burr is a beast. Yeah, yeah. And um, hmm, that fifth spot. <laughs> fifth spot can kind of rotate sometimes. I know it. I know it. Um, I'll put... Uh, all right, this is... I'll put Cat Williams in number ah, five. Ah, that is a, man, a daring selection. It's a, it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I also have a special place for Cat because the first time I ever saw him, uh -huh. he looked at me and he goes, a cat and a wolf. <laughs> 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 and then I was just like, I'll love you forever. <laughs> man, Cat's a cool guy, man. He's in, 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 in like extremely effortless. Yeah. Extremely effortless, man. I mean, with you, you could tell that there isn't, you know, I'm sure he works at his craft, but he goes in there and you could tell that it's of the moment, mm -hmm. present thoughts. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's kind of like freestyling for, you know what I'm saying, for, for, for an artist. Yeah. Um, but, but about being like a, a woman, female comic or whatever, it's, you know, like, I, I think I've been like, I don't know, everyone's like, is it harder, is it harder? And, I've been doing this maybe nine years, stand up about nine years. And mm. I mean, I have two specials, you know, like I've, I've worked on some really good shows. Right. You know, like. And I, you work with Seth Myers as well. Yeah, right? I worked with Seth. You know, like I, I, for me, it hasn't, I don't think it's been harder, but, you know. Well, I, I mean, you're doing fairly well for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, get, you really crush your shit. Man. I don't want to discount all the women who've come before me that had to do like the dirty work. You right. know, and kind of clear the path. Right. Um, but you know, like Adele Givens, you know, yeah. some more. Yeah. You yeah, know yeah, what yeah. I'm yeah. yeah. Monique. Yeah. You know. Uh, I mean, have you ever performed where no one laughed at all? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. <nah. laughs> okay, let's hear about that. One let's time, I that. did this. I did this, and. Honestly, it was probably not great, but I did. Um, <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did this. I had this one woman show that I was doing at the time. It was before I started doing stand up, really. Uh, and so it was just like forty five minutes of me doing a bunch of different characters, and wow. it's all scripted. 
So you can't really break out of it if Whoa. things don't go well. You didn't write it? I wrote it. You Yeah, wrote no, it's it. all on me. It's all 100% <laughs> my fault. How could you do this? Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I was having that conversation in my head the whole time. But it was for like, uh, I did it at this small theater and there was like no, there was like 12 people from like a tour group there. Ugh. And they just sat and stared at me the whole time while I went through this whole 45 minute long thing. It was, Whoa. it felt like I got kicked in the chest. <laughs> it was a slow crash. Yeah. Oh man, it was brutal. And like, just because it's also like, it's hard to do terribly and also like be like changing wigs and like Damn. putting on oh, there was, dumb costumes. You had the Tyler Perry <laughs> yeah. wigs and everything. <laughs> Just like demoralizing it everywhere. Man, I seen that movie. Me and my wife watched that movie, man, Fall from Grace on Netflix. Oh, Tyler I didn't Perry. see that one. Man, listen, man. Great acting. Horrible hair pieces. <laughs> listen, man. The hair pieces. Well, it was like, yo, what's up? This is a party city wig, bro. Like you have a billion dollars. <laughs> Man, I'm talking about that's how that's how the rich stay rich. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We can only spend 1.2 for this film. Something's got to get cut. <laughs> Hair and makeup. You're out of here. I like to think all the actors go to his his studio, his lot or whatever, right. and they're so excited. They're like, he's going to have the best. This is this is for black well, people. Well, it is. It is. It's laid out now. And then they go in and they're like, this is a hair. <laughs> Man, I should have brought you, my own hair. <laughs> I've seen, I, from what I've seen of Black Twitter, everybody loves the movie, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's the most important thing. Although I just feel like, man, that was... Phew. It was some dastardly shit going on in that <laughs> movie, man. I mean, for real. Uh, but... Everyone loves the movie, however. Black Twitter's been giving him hell about those hair pieces. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. If, at least let your people so. look good, you know? Deservingly so. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, like, it was the one scene where the started lady who was locked up, I think her name was Grace, uh, so she comes home, she gets in the shower, mm-hmm. and she put her head in the water and the wig don't get wet. You know what I'm saying? Like, Wait, like, I think I saw a meme of this on Twitter. The wig would not get wet. It won't lay down. And she's just, you know, man, that shit was funny as hell, man. I'd love to see that. Like, I'd love to see the cut from scenes part of that where she gets out of the water. She's like, really? <laughs> she probably pulled it off. Slung it out, you know. <laughs> I just recently discovered that comedians have genres. Yeah. Okay. Well, what genre would you consider Michelle Wolf? Um, I'm kind of in the more social commentary, mm. uh, which I think for me is the most fun genre. It's also the one that can get you in the most trouble. And it's fun, but but it's also the one that you have to stay the most current with mm-hmm. what's going on. Yeah. So so be that as it may, let's talk about some things that's on your mind right okay. now. Okay. Been, that's been going on in the news. What, what has your attention? Um, you know what? The thing that's making me the most mad right now, it's still, and it's been the thing that's bothering me for a while, mm. it's how much we're covering Trump, the non-important stuff. Mm. Like, uh, I was talking to this this comic who's from Australia, and she just raised, like, a ton of money for the wild, wildfires. Okay. And, uh, and I was like, oh, that's so great, so proud of you. And she was like, well, Australia's still on fire. And I was like, it Damn. is? Damn. It's like, we stopped covering it. And I was like, wait, so what of our news have you heard? Did you hear about Nancy Pelosi ripping up the paper? And she was like, yeah, that was a big story uh, in Australia. Damn. And I was like, you're on fire and you got the Nancy Pelosi ripping up a script story? I wonder who, so who's in charge of this? Who pushes, <laughs> who says what stories will go and which ones will not? I don't know, but they need to be replaced. <laughs> <laughs> The bad stuff, like, they're just pushing all this stuff that I'm like, that's not news. What are we doing here? Yeah, yeah. Now, the Joaquin Phoenix speech, was that was dope. I didn't see it. I heard part of it. He's talking about how um, being vegan's good. Is that the gist of it? Nah, he was talking about, you know, uh, the the lack of diversity in Hollywood. Oh, that's very different than being vegan. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> I mean, but the thing is, as he said, everywhere he's like, I know this is going to lose. I know I'm going to lose. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to say it anyway, man. Oh, shit. This is going to cost me. All right. But still, guys, let's do the right thing. I'm never going to work again. Yeah. But, but then he just won uh, Best best Actor for, for Joker. Yeah. I mean, which that's. Which is very dope. But that's the stuff like. It's, and, it's great to do good and do well at the same time. Yeah. That's, I mean, a lot of, a lot of comedy, there's. You know, you see Dave do it. I, I'm trying to do it. It's it's where you're, you're taking a swing, where a lot of people, yeah. you risk a lot of people falling out. Yeah. Which is also, you know, like the fun, the best part about comedy, too, is like a lot of what we say, we're not wrong. Right. You might not want to hear it. That's it. But we're not wrong. Yeah. I mean, I think that, like, you know, whenever you have... Uh, now I do, I do believe that it took a very, very strong wave of conflict to overwhelm you know yeah you know what the the treatment mm-hmm. or mistreatment of women in Hollywood uh, I think that the one time someone's story doesn't add up that jeopardizes the whole shebang yeah you and, know what I'm saying and I we're think. looking at it all on the same gradient where I'm like no there are things that are really bad right. and then there's things that are like frowned upon like, you know? <laughs> give me an example of frown upon. <laughs> what's the barometer for frown upon? <laughs> I mean, I feel like this is what's going to get me in trouble. <laughs> it's okay. You're in a safe place. This is expeditiously. We all get in trouble here. <laughs> this is the best place to do it. <laughs> no, there's, I mean, there's like a lot of stuff that like we just haven't, it was, even if it was bad, it was kind of, we all accepted it as okay. You know, mm. we accept it as like something, you know, like, you know, and even stuff where it's like stuff at the workplace where it's like, all right, well, some people think that's flirting and other people, both men and women. Right. And other people are like, no, that's harassment. And it's like. Well, see, listen, this is the thing, right? After you feel like something has gone too far, have you said, hey, don't do that no more, man. I ain't like that. Yeah. And if it persists after that. Yeah. Well, now you have harassment. But you can't say he winked his eye at me and I felt uncomfortable. You never expressed that you were uncomfortable and gave him an opportunity to correct his behavior. Yes, exactly. Um, You know, just kind of, you know, like, I didn't know you couldn't masturbate in front of somebody. <laughs> I didn't know that was against the law. I mean, I We didn't... need to establish the we rules. We need to set the ground rules. We need the rules. Without the we rules, we don't know. Rules. And it's also like someone's wink is right. the way, you know, like, she was like, he winked at me, and then we started a long, loving relationship. What? And the other person's like, he winked at me, and I thought that was the worst thing that ever happened. Can I have ice and cups, please? I mean, I think that has to, we have to, we have to establish, okay, so the world basically turned over mm-hmm. at some point. Yeah. Let's call it 2000. No, let's say 2001 when the government brought down the towel. So I would laugh so hard if you pour the tequila in there and drink it out of the bowl. Uh, I, I'm not going to. I can't dedicate I can't dedicate that. Can't dedicate myself to that. You know what I'm saying? It'd take a true comedian to go yeah. for that joke. I can't do that one. Um, I mean, okay, so from 2001 up to now, anything that was done before 2001 that's not like you know, anything in the gray area. In the gray. You know what I mean? I think, you know, that should be looked at a little differently. Yeah, I think, I think you know, like, I, I think a lot about how, what do we actually want to have happen? Do right. we want revenge for the past? Okay. Or do we want the future to be better? That's an excellent question. And that's like, I... You know, I, I feel like you might uh, know this as a black person, is that it's really hard to get payment for sins that have been done in the past. Are you telling me? Uh, well, no, I mean, some people can do it. Some, some can. Some people can do it. I mean, not to say that they got what they deserve, but they got more than black people. You got Native Americans. Yeah. They got reparations. Uh, and then you have, I think, uh, the Jewish community. I believe there was some. Well, the form Jews of did. It. They they got a really good it, deal. I think. They, they did. I mean, they had a bad deal. I don't want to say <laughs> they didn't have a good like, but they uh, they they um, it turned out. But all I'm saying is there it is possible to get paid for mm-hmm. sins of the past. 
just not for black people. And <laughs> I, I, I found that, and not to say both of those other parties, even though they got reparations, it did not make the treatment of, of their people any better. Didn't mm-hmm. make it any better. It just could have been a lot worse if they didn't get the reparations. Yeah. Um, I I think that, I mean, I think America, they, they, they really disregard us because, man, I've never seen uh, a, a, a group of people uh, free themselves from oppression without force. Mm-hmm. I've never seen nobody sit at the table and say, okay, uh, we want to be treated fairly now. Yes, well, I'll stop oppressing you. Yeah. You know, no problem, guys. I've never seen that happen for real. And I think that the loss of life and the loss of finance is mm-hmm. the only thing that this country understands. Yeah, thank you. All right, here, cheers, cheers. to Michelle Wolf. To me and to you. Yes, to me too. <laughs> Hell yeah. So you have this, uh, this sketch comedy show. I did. I had a show. It was on for 10 weeks, and then we don't, they stopped it. <laughs> what? what the fuck did you do, Michelle? Well, I didn't, it wasn't, they only gave us 10 weeks, but it just, it never caught. It wasn't. Uh, it's pretty good, though. You thanks. have some pretty good bits in there. Thank you. I mean, we had a lot of fun doing it. It just, it's hard to do that. It was hard to do that kind of thing on Netflix, and it was right after the correspondence dinner. So, Ooh. you know, people kn- that's how people knew me was because of the correspondence dinner, and I wanted to show do a show that wasn't really political, uh-huh. just funny. Right. And so that kind of really, it 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 was hard to marry the two, hmm. you know, to to do a show that fans from the correspondence dinner would catch on with me. Just wanted to be silly and weird. Now, now you you do uh, you especially in your stand up, you do a lot of, I guess, comparing the difference in the life of men and the life of mm-hmm. women. Uh, that's a very interesting uh, interesting take on, on, on things. Could you... <laughs> <laughs> Brand new. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, right? And the joke that keeps on telling. <laughs> so, I mean, well, I would say, where do you draw your inspiration? Like, is it like the dating pool or is it... Not really. I mean, like, I... You know, I grew up with two older brothers. I hung out with boys a lot. You know, I just, like... I kind of always wanted to be around the guys, right? And so I think you kick it well amongst the guys. I have, man. yeah. You know, I, I you can have hang. a very cool vibe. Yeah, I'm. You know, I'm... you'll smoke a cigarette, take a shot of Jack. <laughs> <Yeah>. you know <laughs> what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, I could dig that, and yeah, you could tell a joke. Like, there's nothing. There's nothing better than a girl who can tell a joke. It's a girl who can tell a joke, take a joke, have fun. Yeah. You know, like what, the best part about tell hanging a out joke, with comics... smoke a joint, take a shot. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that's, golly, I'm in love. You know what I'm saying? That's how Tamika got me. <laughs> <laughs> it's the it's it's the best thing. Hanging out with comics is just so fun too because we make fun of each other. That's like how right. we show each other that we love each other. Right. You know, like we have a blast. It's so difficult now to coexist, isn't it's, it? It's like <laughs> it's so hard. But I gotta God tell you, it comes damn. down to the fact that we're I just we're not being honest with each other. I think we're not being honest and we're not really communicating. Like the whole social media shit, you don't even have to you could live with a person, never talk to them. Yeah. Yeah. You could be I mean, me and my wife, I've sent my wife DMs from the <laughs> same room, like from the bedroom to the living room. I'm sending a DM of a of a post. And I think, you know, that kind of it, it, it took away a connection. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A formidable, a tangible connection. How can we replace that? I mean, I think it has to get back to just having conversations. Like, even when I when I have phone calls with people that I care about, I try to FaceTime. Right. So that it's a face-to-face conversation. Okay. Because, like, you know, we all travel a lot. We're yeah. all over the place. But you still need that connection with right. the person. You get to look them in the eyes. Look them in the eyes. See how they respond to what you're saying. Exactly. Like, allow for some silences, you they, know? Listen, there's nothing worse than saying something and then you imagine the person on the other end like... Yeah. Or yeah. even worse, texting and then seeing the little <laughs> bubble come up and, and then no, seeing it disappear <laughs> and then seeing it come up again. You're like, oh, no, what are they thinking? What are they doing? Did they read that wrong? You I know. mean, I think that's the, the, uh, people are always um, up in arms about what other people are thinking. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's all of social media, too. All, social media is just people Jesus. being like, how dare they say that? Uh, I don't agree with that. It's like, no. 
you know, I, me and Joyner Lucas, a good buddy of mine, man, young hip hop artist, man. You should check him out if you get a chance. Him and uh, my other buddy, Five Mics, and uh, my cousin Javon and my brother Bryce were sitting down. We're, we're talking, and we're talking about the difference in, like, I think the topic of discussion was. Uh, oddly enough, OG rappers, and if anybody still cares about what we have to say, so that was uh, <laughs> show you how good of a household we have. My friends come and talk about whether or not people still want to hear what OG rappers have to say. All right, so, so, we're, so we're, we're, we were currently discussing the Eminem, the new Eminem project, uh, and Wayne's new project. Uh, in comparison to, say, like, Jay's last project, 444. So, you know what I'm saying? Jordan was like, yo, you know what I'm saying? For real? You done said it all. What else you gonna say? Like, what else is there to say? What else? Nobody, you know what I mean? Everybody's heard it. There's no new rhyme schemes. There's no new... And I'm thinking, like, damn, that must... That's, damn, that's how they feel about me, too, I guess. <laughs> but that just goes to show, you know, I was really projecting. Yeah. Uh, cause, <laughs> but then I reminded myself, I don't give a fuck what nobody feel. Yeah. Uh, but he goes on so he goes on uh, further to say, see, when they came out, there was no internet, so you never heard any opinions except for the columnists mm -hmm. and editors and so on and so forth who wrote in magazines. You never got to you never got to hear uh, uh, Johnny Williams who packed boxes at the Walmart's opinion. Right. You never got to hear the cashier at the gas station's opinion about what you do. And now with social media, everybody's opinion you're, you're exposed to. And that can fuck with the psyche of a person who's, who's essentially selling confidence. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, but the same thing's true with comedy and you know, it's like, what else, what other jokes are there? And Ooh. I think it's, it all comes down, you have to keep evolving. Now, 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 speaking of what other jokes are there, how do you think Eddie did on set, on, this, on the SNL? I loved it. I was there. I went to the taping. Dope. Uh, it was, I mean, it was so cool to see him do uh, his old characters, yeah. you know, like, and <clears throat> I, uh, you know, I, I'm good friends with Michael Che, who's the head writer there. I know. Uh, He's and, dope. Yeah, and he, um, it was also cool to see these young comics I'm friends with, like Michael, Sam J, you mm -hmm. know, writers on the show, that this was their dream to have Eddie as the host. And to see that, like, dream come true for them, to right. see them write stuff for Eddie, right. you know, like, it was it was really cool. Man, I mean, so I, I hear you working on a, a, a new special. What do you think? I, you know, I would love to see it. What I would really love is I'd love to see him working on it. Uh, I'd love to see it in a club. Right. And then I'd love to, love to see it like a month later. Yeah. You know, we just spoke, we were just speaking about, you know, the difference in, in, in comedy clubs versus like the big arena shows. Mm -hmm. I mean, I myself, I, I, I prefer the comedy clubs and the, the, the weekdays. Yeah. That's what you told me. That's when you get the good stuff, the yeah. grit. Yeah, the grit. <laughs> Gritty during the week. That's when we're trying stuff out. We're like, it's a Tuesday. Right. <laughs> I was just with Kevin, I think like a week or so ago, man. He popped up at the Peppermint Club and did mm -hmm. a set, man. He was actually fucking funny. Yeah, this shit was fucking dope. I mean, it's, it's dope to hear it first. It's great. It's, I I don't I mean, and I, part of it's because I I do comedy and I love stand up so much, but I love to see people working out jokes. Mm. I love to see them like try to find it. I love to see when you see it click in for them. Right. You know, and then I love to see it again another time to see what they changed, how yeah. it has evolved, like. It, it's. I saw Dave working out for the, for Sticks and Stones. Mm -hmm. I saw he was uh actually came to Atlanta and we kicked it and shit. We was he was um doing a a a piece for for my project uh, uh the Dime Trap mm -hmm. that was a phenomenal project that not enough people heard, but it's all right. We'll move on. <laughs> um, <laughs> but in the, in, in the midst of, of what we were doing in the studio, he said, "Man, I need to go. I need to I need to get to a, I need to get to a club." Mm -hmm. I'm like, what do you mean? We're in the middle of drinking, chilling, and smoking, and just like mid conversations, like, I gotta get to a club. I'm like, what do you mean you gotta get to a club? So I'm thinking like a strip club. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's like, nah, let me. Then he calls some comedy club database mainframe <laughs> operator system. He's like, I'm in Atlanta. I need the closest club. I need to get in the room. That's what he said. I need to get in a room. 
and uh, and he directed me to this place, and we go in there, man, and he just go up there, man, and for an hour and a half, ripped it. Yeah. I'm talking about, and that was the, for nobody knew we were coming. I, we walking in with Dave, like, God damn, it's Dave Chappelle, and there's T.I. You know? <laughs> 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 and, and he got up there and ripped that shit, man. Mm-hmm. That, that was phenomenal. I went with Chris, uh, Chris Tucker as well. Mm-hmm. I went to work out some jokes with him. Uh, um, I mean, I, I was just going, but he was the one on stage. Yeah. We go into this uh, this this hole in the wall uh, comedy club with you know what I'm saying full of full of black people and a couple of white people, man, who got a little edge to them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and he got up there, man, and tore it down for about 35, 45 minutes. I hang out with a lot of comedians. Rappers and comedians have a very good relationship. Yeah, I think there's a lot that. of sim- similarities right. between what we do and what we're after. I think it's the I don't give a fuck of it all. I don't give a fuck. We're all truth tellers. Yeah. You know, like even though I know a lot of rappers, you know. They be faking. Yeah. They be faking. But it's a lot. There's also some of those lines where you're like, it connects with you because it's real to you. You yeah. can relate to it whether he can or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes, you know, a motherfucker say some shit. I'm like, I know you ain't do that, but I did. So, I'm yeah. gonna, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I can dig it. Uh, I mean, man, you, you've you had quite the illustrious career, man. What else is there left for Michelle Wolf to do? I, I, I want to just, I mean, stand-up's my favorite thing in the world. I want to keep doing it. I want to keep evolving. I want to, you know keep trying to get better i i'm hopefully gonna put out another special of course you are soon you fucking right um you're fucking right if they'll let me I have another, the yeah i have a, i have another one ready to go out so. into the atmosphere michelle wolf part two what you gonna name it uh i'll name it scheme scheme yeah and why would you name it that miss well, wolf talking about a lot of schemes <laughs> <laughs> Hey, can I ask you a question? Do you really feel bad for people like when they like send people money and like for instance, like is these people who go who go on Facebook, right? And they'll find a random picture of me, mm-hmm. put the picture on there, and then they'll say, um, this, 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 and that and the other, I'm giving away such and such. All you gotta do is send me this much money to here. And then those people send the money yeah. and then say you know, you got to stop them from doing that. No, you got to stop sending money to strangers. You got to stop believing the things you read. I, but it's just like, it's one of those things where I'm like, you guys have to, you have to do a little research. Man, I, I remember think that's fair. When I was in school, uh, the internet was first coming around and we were first using it to do research projects. Mm. And I remember our teachers were always like, if you're going to use the internet for research, make sure it's either a .org or a .gov. Dot org or dot gov. Don't don't believe anything on a dot com. <laughs> and even now, I feel like dot org and dot gov can be nah, a little shaky. Especially the dot gov. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the dot gov shaky as a motherfucker, man. You never know what you might get. Do uh, some research. Have several sources. Please. Please do some due diligence before you go around, you know, sp- splurting your falsities around. <laughs> uh, what, what? And take accountability for your actions. See, that's the thing that the internet don't have. Mm-hmm. They just switch their names up and go, like, for instance, if if someone says at the beginning of the season, uh, the Hawks are going to win the finals. Mm-hmm. And then, oh, you got a lot of faith in Atlanta. They, no, I'm just saying, <laughs> no, I'm just saying. If someone was to say that. Let's say around uh, around May, around playoff time, if the Hawks ain't in it, uh, the Bulls have always been my team. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying. That you can't. Nobody goes. And it's it's the luxury of anonymity. Mm-hmm. When you have absolutely no one who can point you back to your statements and actions. Yeah, and you know, there's all these people on social media who they try to call people out and they it makes them feel like they did something that day. Mm. That they had a little bit of power and it's like, but who are you? Lil Duval called that fake Karen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, for, 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 from what, and this is another, uh, another, another jewel that came from the discussion last evening. It's almost like through life, physically, we 
get to determine who we choose to spend our time around. Mm-hmm. And we pass people up on the street all the time. Nope, not you. Nope. nope, nope, nope. <laughs> Going on about my business. Nope, 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 not you. Nope. And we place ourselves in the company that we care to keep. Mm-hmm. The Instagram said, no, not Instagram, but social media altogether, said, fuck that shit. Whether you like it or not, you're going to mix and mingle with all of these people. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like... It's a public pool. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a public pool, basically. It doesn't matter 100%. whether you live in these apartments or not. It don't matter where you from. Man, get your ass in. I don't care who you are. Come on, jump in. You yeah. got an opinion? Get in the pool. Get in the pool. Who's going to get in that pool? I mean, all of these people. Totally not. I can't be in that pool. Well, that's the thing. You, I'm out of here. You have to remove yourself from the Public pool. Public pool? I gotta go. Yeah, you have to rem- like you have to remove I yourself from the pool. You can't let yourself touch the pool. It's only a, it's only a matter of time before something resembling a Snickers will be floating in the water. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Public pool? That's a no no. Yeah, I mean like uh. There's not enough chlorine in the world. Yeah. Not, I'm telling you. Not for the public. <laughs> Which, by the way, I love you, the public. You buy tickets to our shows. <laughs> yes, but I just don't want to be in the pool with you. I'd be in the, in the comedy club I'll stay or on the, the stage, arena you guys. with you. Yeah, but the pool, the pool, <laughs> hell no, man. Because I, I wouldn't suggest that you do it either. It yeah. just doesn't feel, it doesn't, it doesn't feel hygienic. Yeah, and it's hard because, like, people, they want to... Um, they want to peg you as someone. They want to put you in a box. They want to be able to be like, oh, because you said this, this is who you are. And it's like, they we're will... all very dynamic people. Sure, sure. Like, there's, you might have one opinion, but it might change the next day. That's called projection. They, they, they're projecting their limitations mm-hmm. on you. Uh, usually because they feel like, you know, if they were in your shoes, they wouldn't, either they wouldn't have thought to do something or they wouldn't be able to do something in their own mind. And they're projecting their fears, failures, and limitations on you. Uh, I I also think that, uh, I 100% agree, and I also think that there's, you know, like, people want to belong to a group. Mm. They want to be in a community. And for the longest time, you know, a lot of that was religion. And now mm. that people are less religious, they're trying to find what their community is. What do you mean? All the little boys getting fucked in the ass? <laughs> <made> people <laughs> they might have their shied gods. away a little bit. Oh, well, this guy, uh, <laughs> this, this guy obviously <laughs> doesn't mind if I get fucked in the ass. Let me find a new one. Yeah, yeah. You but, know, I mean, let's not make any women priests. That would be know. terrible. <laughs> Whoa, there's an interesting dynamic. Mm-hmm. There are no women priests. No women priests. What? It's no. almost like they're hogging it. You guys are too good for them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, but they, what are the nuns then? Well, they're just nuns. So nuns and priests, that's different. Yeah, they're different. They're like, uh, they kind of serve the priests, I think. And also, I mean, God. They serve the priests. Yeah, a little bit. But I thought that, the, but, see, the thing about religion to me, is it seems like it seems like a cop out. Like you want to present yourself as this religious, uh, uh, spiritual, evolved being, so you are to the public. You are uh, denying yourself of your vices and lustful and your lustful nature. And everyone else think, oh, this guy goes around. He just he doesn't have any. He doesn't have the urge to get his rocks off. Mm-hmm. Wow, look at how focused he is. So you receive all of the the praise for that, and in the meanwhile, you are judging people that are, you know, I guess that that still s- kind of subside to their lustful behavior. Uh, But to make themselves happy, not bothering anyone. Yes. Consenting adults. Mm -hmm. But you judge them because you are denying yourself of your vices. You're closer to God. Well, and you also have the best get out of jail free card, which you can say, Uh. if you do mess up, you can be like, I messed up, but I talked to God. We're clearing (laughs) this thing out. Just trust me. We'll have this thing all washed away by the morning. Yeah. And but but in the in your private time, you're looking up little boys on the internet. I mean, you're doing crazy stuff. You know what I'm Anytime saying? Anytime you're it's like when you're on like a really strict diet, 
And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, sorry, I ate a pan of brownies. You know? <laughs> a whole pan? <laughs> a whole pan of little boys. I mean, why, <laughs> geez, why did, I don't, I, I mean, like, everybody could just be real with themselves, okay? We all are good people with lustful behavior at times. Mm-hmm. Everyone can agree on that. Don't present yourself as anything higher or mightier than thou. And you won't have to see that's that. See, I have already set the bar very low. The Fed case kind of, <laughs> you know, back to prison for the second time. Uh-huh. It's kind of like, you know what? <laughs> as long as he's out of prison, he's OK. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think. But but that honesty, that vulnerability, that willingness to accept accountability for your mistakes makes people respect you and appreciate you more than you know pretending to be something you aren't yeah i mean you should have a healthy relationship with who you are as a person you know like you shouldn't be denying yourself i'm not saying you should go crazy but like you should be you should be honest with who you are as a person and then also that makes you really vulnerable to be like i think it would I think it would solve, to go back to the Me Too stuff, it could help solve a lot of the problems to be like, hey, these are the things I'm into. Mm. You know, if we we stop being such a Puritan society of like, we don't talk about that kind of stuff, it's like, no, like, let's, you know, like, be honest with people. Say what you want, speak your mind. I agree. I think that, you know, communication is... You know, that's what separates us from savage beasts. Mm -hmm. The ability to articulate and, and, and... to, to reason mm-hmm. uh what do you think is too far like when like what would make see because you seem like a pretty laid-back chill gal if you're in a bar and then you know like whoa bro you kind of took it too far dude what would what would an example be i mean it really depends like i was in a bar the other day and this guy kept i mean this guy just kept backing into me not in a sexual way or anything just like he just kept hitting me with his back without saying excuse with, me yeah without so I, eventually i just go i go my man you got to stop running into me. Uh, and then he goes, oh, sorry, I didn't even realize. And I was like, all right. But, like, I, I'm i okay saying that to a guy. Okay. I know there's some women that, like, would shy away from that. Right. Which I think we also need to get over. You know, you need to. Assert especially yourself. Especially if there's not someone with you who can help you out. You know, yeah. you, need to, you need to stand strong. But also, uh, and <laughs> maybe this says a lot about my personality. I don't get a lot of guys come up to me and try to be creepy or weird i think i'm pretty they just do it sub like subconsciously yeah i think i'm pretty like i i don't know maybe i give up the vibe of being unapproachable to people who don't know me but like i don't get a lot of random guys like come up and as soon as they do like there was a guy remember there was a guy at a bar he said something to me and i let him talk for like a couple minutes and i was like you're not impressive at all whoa shit You said that? Yes. What did he say? He was like, he was like, what? And I go, you run a vape company. That's why he Damn. ran a vape company. <laughs> and I was like, you're not impressive. I don't want to talk to you. Man. So so how long did that conversation last? We ca- we talked another half hour. <laughs> <laughs> did he did he did he get better? I mean, it's like as soon as you start being honest like that, he right. starts being less of like a I'm trying to like puff my chest for you kind of guy. Right. You know. Then I'm like I actually like get to like I mean I still had no interest in seeing or doing anything with him. It was what? just one of those things where it was like no all right now at all. You... he wasted the best forty five minutes of his life. I mean, and you just sat there. <laughs> Smiled and nodded in agreement. Yeah. I mean, I no told intention. Him, I told him what I thought of him. I was never misleading at all. <laughs> so he continued the conversation at his own risk. Yes, yes, exactly. Well, I see you have a math pendant on your oh, denim yeah. jacket. This is the this is the Yang uh, Andrew Yang uh, Yang Gang. Okay. Math. Um, that's one of his. I don't know. Okay. Some well, of his uh, swag. do you like do you like math? I love math. You do? I love math. Okay. Uh, um, oh, you're a banker. Of course you do. Yeah. I mean, I was uh, I was an exercise. I was a kinesiology major in college, which is. A who? Kinesiology. A who? What the fuck it's is that? It's a study of how the body moves. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so let me guess. You can dance. <laughs> <laughs> Not as good as I think I can. I mean, get a couple drinks in me and I'm all over the place. Mm-hmm. But... <laughs> 
Uh, but it, it's a, a lot of it's just exercise science. Okay. And, uh, you know, like I wanted to be one of those people. You remember those old Gatorade commercials where you'd see like doctors like doing like stats on people running on treadmills with oh, like gotcha. stuff hooked up like to them. Like the shit in the 50 Cent video. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. <laughs> I wanted to be that doctor. <laughs> okay. And what happened? Uh, Comedy. I, I kind of got burned out at school. And so. So you didn't finish? I finished. I finished, but I, you know, like, you know, I, I worked. I, I worked. I worked myself too hard and mm. then my friends uh they had all gotten jobs on wall street and they were like you know what get a job on wall street move to new york we'll live yeah. in new york for a couple years you worked yourself too hard i worked myself too hard i hate it when that happens <laughs> <laughs> i was one of those insufferable people that i didn't want to just get uh an a i wanted to get the best grade in the class mm. i was hard to be around <laughs> were, you think, I mean, did you, were you like a uh an anal studier yes yeah i would i on so I, d- I was on the track team in college, and I lived in the track house. There was a couple girls. We had a track house. Gotcha. It was like the track house. and uh, Not the crack house. Not, not the crack be, house. Not, not to the be crack. confused with the crack house. I mean, there was stuff going on. But that was, was not... around the corner, of course. <laughs> you know, I went to William & Mary, which is in Williamsburg, in Virginia. You had to okay. go to Newport News for the crack uh, house. <laughs> bad news, Newport. Okay. Which, by the way... A lot of family from Newport News. Right on. Uh, <laughs> I love Virginia, man. Virginia, love Virginia. Virginia Hampton, Virginia Beach, Newport News. I, my grand, my grandfather lived Norfolk. in uh, Hampton Roads. Okay. Uh, I have I have family up there as well, man. New, in Virginia, that was like one of those shootout shows. Yeah. Yeah, Virginia. You know what I'm saying? They, it can get. Yeah, they get they get greedy. <laughs> Virginia and, and uh, uh, North Carolina, mm-hmm. uh, Jacksonville, Florida. <laughs> well, anything in Florida is know, a little touchy. New though. Orleans, <laughs> you dig what I'm saying? Like those are the places when you coming up. You know what I'm saying? You going, you touring the Chitlin Circuit as they call mm-hmm. it. And you know, it's just certain cities are synonymous with shootouts, man. You just Detroit. You know what I'm saying? You kind of expect to pull your pistols and have to assert yourself in some way, well, shape, so form, or fashion. I know what it's like to be on, like, the, you know, when you're starting out as, like, a stand-up. East St. Louis. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime you put in a direction, you know it's going to be bad. <laughs> uh, but, like, I know what it's like to be, like, a comic that's, try- like, starting out working on stuff. What is it like in your, like, for you guys? Like, are you doing small clubs and... Random the smallest. Cities? The smallest. Yeah. Someone got shot on stage one time. I wow. Was early Did they keep going? Well, no, no, no. no. <laughs> I was on stage. Uh, this was my first album. Uh, and, you know, I kind of had to take matters into my own hands because the label didn't necessarily get it at the time. Mm-hmm. So we're in Rome, Georgia, in what appears to be it's a shed. This is more like mm-hmm. a sock hop. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, no bullshit. They got the hay on the ground with the dirt, and it's a stage and speakers, and it's in like a barn, I guess you could call it. So I go on stage, but they had cash money, though. Were you at a juke joint? No, I'm kidding. I mean, <laughs> there was no sign, no name, no nothing. This was literally somebody's barn that they wow. set up a stage in. Uh, but they paid cash money. Anyway, so... I get there, I'm on the stage with, you know, having a good time, man. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it really was, it was, it seemed like some good down home fun, you know? And then uh, the my, my most successful or most popular song at the time, uh, which was Dope Boys, I played it. And before I could get through to the first verse, pop, pop, pop. And, you know, okay, time to go. <laughs> this is the next stop, my house. Uh, we got the hell on, man. Uh, but but we had times like that all around the country. Yeah. Like, because, th- th- to be honest with you, I really do believe it's a testament to the type of energy you put out is the type of energy you will receive. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I was putting out the kind of energy that I, that I, you know, that I grew up conjuring for myself. And, you know, that energy returned to me. Uh, and so that is why when you travel, especially early on in your career, it's almost like proving yourself. Like, I'm going to go and I'm going to win as many fights as I can on the mm-hmm. road. I'm going to win as many shootouts. And I'm going to try and dodge as many cases as I can until I get to be a big star. And I don't have to do that shit no more. So it's just a race against the clock. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Can yeah. I not get killed, not go to jail, you know, not not get beat up and still make it and 
prove that I am everything that I say I am and ride off into the sunset with a big bag of money. Yeah. It's hard. <laughs> it's I mean, you know, it's like juggling knives on on a unicycle. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Trying not to get nicked. No yeah. peroxide on sight. Yeah. I mean, that's like, I mean, it's, it's really similar. It's a little different than comedy because we have, you know, more clubs to go to. You right. Know? Um, you know, they might be like chuckle huts in like Albany, but they're I mean all they're of those like, are good. Yeah. All of those are good. Now how is it telling jokes to people that you know live very meek, modest lives? You know what I'm saying? Like if you go to a very small town, you know their exposure is not as vast as say if you go to D C Sure. You know what I'm saying? Or come to Atlanta or even LA. So how do you like you said the chuckle hut? In Athens, mm -hmm. where all they got is you know go dogs, yeah, Georgia football, you know what I'm saying. So how do you go there and appeal to them with the broad perspective that you bring from New York, L.A., or San Francisco? I find that first of all, when, anytime you go to a, a smaller town, like not a you know top tier kind of city, right? Uh, they call them D markets. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's what you look. I was trying for. to be polite. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> market. <laughs> uh, they, uh, you know, they're grateful to have entertainment there, you know, because like a lot of people pass them by. So like when sense. you go, they're like excited to see you. Yeah. But it also is helpful in honing your own material because you can be like, okay, how can I, re how can I make sure this also relates to them? Right. Because you got to remember the majority of America is not the big cities. That's right. You know, like, That's so we're right. trying to appeal to all the small towns and we're trying to make all of this resonate. That's where the lion's share of your funds come from. Yeah, so like that's you know you go there and you like. I love it. It's great. I mean, I love it like while you're on stage and performing. I love it then. It's like when you get off the stage and have to go to the hotel Ooh. or have to go and <laughs> you know what I'm saying. As you have to actually function off stage, living your normal life. Those are the things that come with everything. Like you hungry, it's twelve thirty and there's nothing open. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think, you know, those are the things. There was one gig I was doing in Kansas City, and uh, they put you up in this airport Hilton, wow. uh, which, you know, it's not a bad hotel. It doesn't sound that you know, bad. But it's by the airport, and the only thing near it are two gas stations. Damn. So if you want to eat, uh. you got to get... Food from the gas stations, Damn. so it's just like a weekend of like beef jerky and crackers. Like, you know, <laughs> like you're like just like living like a dad on the run. <laughs> Tune on, <right? laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, what is the what, what what is the thing that people would be surprised to know about Michelle Wolf? Oh, um, I, you know, honestly, I think the p thing that people would be most surprised is that like, I think people because of the correspondence there pegged me as a political comedian, and I am. Not you're not. I'm not. I mean, like I, I feel like Interviews any good comic. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like any good comic can lives in the gray. Okay. You know, like we can argue any side of we. We'll argue the funniest side of the there situation. You go. Okay. You know, but like I, I'm a, I'm a liberal. I'm definitely a liberal. But like I also. Uh, that means she smokes marijuana. People. <laughs> <laughs> whenever, whenever, whenever Every once in a while. Whenever someone uh, says that, <laughs> I'm a you know. Uh, I, uh, but, you know, like, I I try to tell jokes that encompass issues that we're all facing, you know, and from, like, a realistic perspective, not from, like, a bleeding heart liberal perspective, mm. just from, like, no, this is the reality. Right. I'm not here to tell you what you wanted to hear. I'm here to tell you what you didn't know you wanted to hear. Hmm. And you sp still might not want to hear it after you heard it. <laughs> <laughs> they say, man, the truth will set you free, but it'll piss you off first. It'll piss you off first, for yeah. sure. I mean, man, you've been doing a great job of pushing the envelope, but still maintaining your your fan base and expanding uh, that as you release your you working on your second, yeah, I your mean, second special. I really hope this next one it's gonna test my fan base a little <laughs> bit. I'm kind of pushing on some buttons, and hopefully they stick with me. But hey, man, I think. Well, for for every for every one you drop off, there'll be three more to pick up. I hope so. Now here at Expeditiously, we have a, a a tradition that is called the Word of the Week. Okay. Now for this Word of the Week, this is how can I say? It is a word that is indicative of the guest or the conversation that we were having. Mm -hmm. uh, and for you, uh, after watching 
after watching your special and some of your sketch comedy, uh, the word that I selected was facetious. <laughs> facetious is the word that I selected for you, Miss Wolf. And it means not meant to be taken seriously or literally. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's a good uh, word for me. And now, <laughs> and now what I'll do is I'll use it in a sentence so people who listen, they can go back to school, back to work, or back in the hood, stand around their partners and they can use it and act like, you know, they've known it their whole lives, giving me or you no credit at all. But that's okay. That's what we do here at Expeditiously. Uh, the sentence for facetious. Sometimes Michelle Wolf's facetious remark is blah, blah, blah. that's a lot to say. It's a lot. It's Michelle a lot of Wolf's C's and H's. <laughs> it's a good thing you don't have a list. <laughs> Sometimes Michelle Wolf's facetious remarks on air are taken literally by online trolls. Such an un unfortunate scenario. <laughs> I don't think people should take you seriously, especially you being a comedian. I think that you should have, you should be able to run the gambit. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't, if we don't figure out what to laugh at, you know what I'm saying, we don't know what we really should be concerned about. A hundred percent. Yeah. And so what? Where can people see you next? Um, I'm I'm on tour right now. Uh, I'm I'm all over the country. I go to Denver next week. DC. Good week uh, in Denver. Love Denver, love DC. DC, uh, yeah, good weed in DC. Going too. to a, you know, I got and a strip the club stadium you, slash tour. You stopped on? Did you stop at stadium? No. When, when you're in DC, yeah, go to go to go stadium. To stadium. Yeah, go to stadium. Is that a, I missed Magic City club. when you, man, the last happened? time. I I got there a day late, and it everyone went to epic. Magic City the day before I got there. It was there. epic. That I was heard the, about it. I heard all time. about it. <laughs> man, it was me, Dave, Nip. Danielle Rollins, uh, I think Shaka was there. Man. We had a <laughs> fantastic time. Do you hear me, man? That of legends. That of legends. Long live Nipsey Hussle, by the way. We had a phenomenal time, man. I it heard about great. it. Yeah, but, you, but, 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 but the day you came, we did okay. We did okay. We did okay. We did okay. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't Monday night in Magic City, but we did all right. We did all right. Uh, I think, um, I, hey, listen, man, this is just coming from me, and I'm friends with lots of comedians. I kind of study the craft. Uh, do you watch uh, Jerry Seinfeld's Comedians in Cars getting I coffee? I do. I haven't seen all the episodes, but I've seen a lot of them. I've seen most of them. Yeah. They're pretty fucking good. They're pretty good. They're pretty good. I think I'm going to nominate you to be on there. I think you'd have oh, a thanks. very funny episode. I would love to do it, uh, but he, he uh, Seinfeld is one of those shows that, like, it still works. Mm. There's very few comedies that still work. Mm. Now, what do you? Speaking of comedies that still work, what do you think about this whole friends versus living single thing? Oh, I saw that. <laughs> now, you know, I mean, of course, you know, by the statistics, the analytics show living single came like they were out like. Eight months before Friends was. Yeah. So what do you think? Like, just tell me. How do you? Well, I mean, can you imagine white people stealing something from <laughs> black people? I don't, I don't know if it's ever happened. <laughs> ah. I, you know, the biggest, the biggest, the thing that, that needs to happen more than anything else is that there's Friends reruns on all the time. Mm. Put in those living single reruns. That makes sense. On the major networks. It's that a makes sense. phenomenal show. It's just it's, like And also it's like, you know, like as I remember watching it as a girl and I was like, "Oh, a show about funny women." Like they wow. were all they were having a good time. There right. was like real relationships. Right. Like there was it was great to see that. I used to love Maxine. Oh my god. I used to love Maxine. She was spicy. She was great. <laughs> she was great. Now, um, I think that we also, you know, there's all kinds of shows that have absolutely help yourself. Thank you. As much tequila <laughs> as you like. As much tequila as you like. I didn't even ask. Like. <laughs> I think there are all kinds of shows that, you know, that have that have kind of morphed into a different version of other shows. Mm -hmm. Like, let's say 
different strokes and silver spoons. <laughs> it's the same fucking show. <laughs> it's the same fucking show. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, Growing Pains and the Cosby Show. Like it's. I mean, they couldn't even. They were like, "We'll make him a therapist." Blossom <laughs> and Moesha. <laughs> the same fucking show. I wonder if you look at all the start times of those shows. I've, now, now we're getting in the weeds. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. I don't want NBC, ABC, CBS, none of the alphabets. Listen, to come. we all still want to work. You know, I, I just want to live. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, if you did a show, what would it be about? Um, you know what? I would do a show about uh, about the news. I'd love to do a news uh, show to see like Murphy Brown. A little bit, but like <laughs> to see like what's behind the scenes. You know, like especially like you know how they how they come up with like Rachel Maddow's whole hour, you know, mm. like, but you know, funny of course, right. but also just like exposing. I love, I love white shows. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Now don't get me wrong. I like, I love the black shows too, but I love white shows. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Good times is good, but I'm all too familiar with that. You show mm-hmm. me Roseanne. Let me see how white people get through the struggle. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, and and I think that I think you know why I think a lot of people are related to Roseanne. I think a lot of us had that crochet quilt that they had on our couch. Hell yeah, that we all were like, was, "That's my quilt." Everybody <laughs> had it, didn't they? I mean, um, I, so so television right now. What is the funniest shit on TV that you think you've seen? I mean, presently. Oh, I mean, I know Veep just ended, but uh. Veep was I. That was one of my favorite shows I've seen in a long time. That was a funny, funny show. Mm. I'm, I'm, I, they have great jokes. The jokes per minute of that show right. are just like, and they're insulting. They're fun. They're fast. I love that show. Man. Um, what else did I watch recently? Fleabag was good. Fleabag was, uh, I don't know if you've seen that. I haven't seen, seen Fleabag. Fleabag's good. It's this British woman, uh, and she, you know she's all, all sorts of crazy. Man, hands down for me. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. Oh, yeah. Hands down, the funniest shit on TV. Yeah. I don't care. There's, I, I don't know if it's black comedy, white comedy. That shit is just hilarious. It's just funny. Danny DeVito is fucking amazing. He's great. Yeah. Uh, also, Shameless. I've never seen Shameless. Shameless is some of the best shit you can watch. Now, they start getting a little kind of like, you know. Yeah. You know when they start running out of shit to to do I but wish it's good I wish every show was like this is gonna be three seasons mm. that's it just love us now it's yeah. only three seasons I think that is they're, they're, if that some that, of them should be two some of them should be one <laughs> yeah some people should be, you know what I'm saying like a limited series you yeah. know what I'm saying well that's why it's like Fargo is one of my favorite shows also one of my favorite movies but Fargo I love mm. and um because every series is its own contained thing dark okay. but also funny Right. What about Breaking Bad? Did you get into that? I watched Breaking Bad last winter for the first time. I saw the last season. I ain't seen none of the others. I, you know what? Before I started watching the whole thing, I saw the last two episodes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I saw, like, it was such a big deal on the finale season. <clears throat> I started watching it, and I said I'd go back, but I didn't. Mm. You know, it's a big commitment. Yeah, man. You know, they got like ten seasons. It's a lot. Wow. Yeah. Ooh. What 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 do you think of Curb Your Enthusiasm coming back? Um, I saw a clip for a, a preview, which was he he just keeps putting on a Make America Great Again hat yeah. when he wants to get out of a conversation, right? Which I think is a very <laughs> funny bit. <laughs> yeah, uh, that show because you know sometimes there's been a couple years between seasons. Uh huh. You go back to watch like a season one or season two Man. the cameras are so much worse what do you mean like the quality of the but filming it seemed like you were watching reality tv it looks like reality we never, tv we never fucking knew yeah uh what about what about uh uh entourage i never saw it you never saw entourage? i never saw entourage there was a large period of Michelle. time where i didn't have hbo Michelle. <laughs> Goodness, I know another. I know another show that could have come from uh, uh, a previous show, 
Girlfriends. You mm-hmm. remember that? Yeah, Kelsey yeah, yeah. Grandma executive produced it uh, with Tracy Ellis Ross and Friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kelsey verse, Grammer? Yeah, Kelsey <laughs> Grammer pr- executive produced. That's right. his show, Girlfriends. He also did the game, just, you know, fun fact. Really? Yeah, he loves he loves his chocolate. <laughs> 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 but nah, man, I mean, I think that he told, you know, he told the story from a very honest and relevant perspective, especially for black women at the time. Mm-hmm. So, Girlfriends versus Sex in the City. Well, uh... I mean, girlfriends, of course, never got the acclaim. Acclaim that right. Sex in the City right. did. I, you know, Sex in the City again comes down to reruns. Sex in the really City's watched. on. Did you watch it? I watched it, but I watched it. I was in college at the time. Okay. And we watched it. You know, a group of friends of mine watched it. Now that I go back and I see episodes, I'm like, this. Acting, first of all, the acting is not great. You talking about in Sex in the City? Yeah. What? Yeah, some of the acting, you're like, oh, okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, I wish they would play reruns of Girlfriends. Mm, it's get, I, I'm, I'm telling you, it's coming you down to some. reruns. I think you can find some. It's just hard. It's on like, you know, I like think a, it's on your own demand if you if you look. I uh, know, but that's the thing. Search UPN. <laughs> <laughs> Does UPN still exist? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> But that's like, you know, it would be it'd be great to have like an honest Sex in the City girlfriends combination uh, where like you hear like a Carrie Bradshaw complain, yeah. you know, and then like like another character's like shut Bitch, up. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you know how many shoes you have? <laughs> Get your privileged ass back it is up. It's going great. You, you have a rent controlled apartment. <laughs> A white family just moved into my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Gentrification, bringing different cultures together. I think Sad the Entertainer has a show like that. <laughs> yeah. He, he uh, um, uh, gentrification, though, sorry, I did want to bring this up. The, okay. The most, you know, you hear a lot of, again, come back to white women blogging and complaining about stuff. Right. The craziest part is they're doing it from their apart, their bedsty apartment. Oh. Where it's like, you pushed out a family. Wow. You're blogging about how someone said something that offended you right. or how dare you do that while you're sitting in an apartment that should not belong to you. Damn. That your dad's probably pay- paying for. Damn. Well, I mean... That brings. I saw an episode of uh, the last OG mm-hmm. about gentrification. They had Method Man, Tracy Morgan, uh, they, and they listen. That's a pretty dope show. It's a show that could be cheesy, mm-hmm. and that's another one where the wigs are not the best. <laughs> you know, not the best. For there, you know, that's TBS. One, so, not, it's but, <laughs> you know. so you have uh, Tracy Morgan who got out of prison and he's coming back and reacclimating himself to society cut to Tracy Morgan before he went in prison and he's supposed to have cornrows mm-hmm. there. So they put the fucking cornrow wig on. It's like, yo, come on, dude. <laughs> you may as well just take a marker. <laughs> <laughs> Give him like a Charlie Brown like little <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And was put you get what we trying to do on the side. <laughs> I love Tracy. There was this one time he popped into the cellar and you know, we're all sitting at the table. Uh, Tracy's telling some stories, and then all of a sudden he pulls out a bag of Russell Stover jelly beans. What? And first of all, is this fat Tracy? Or is this like you know fit Tracy? This is like a year ago. Tracy. Oh, okay. This is fit Tracy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this rich Tracy. This is rich Tracy. Super rich. This is Tracy. super rich Tracy, <laughs> and I think that's important for the it's Russell Stover jelly bean part of this conversation. Zero calorie jelly <laughs> yeah. beans. You so know he, that's how rich he is. He pulls out these jelly beans. He goes, "It's Russell Stover," and then he pulls them into a, pours them into a bowl, and he's like, "Everyone have some jelly beans." <laughs> And then we all we're like okay, and so we're like picking up jelly beans. He goes, "Not the green, the green are for me." <laughs> like, what are we doing? Man, hey, that's another great man. Tracy Morgan is fucking hilarious, and you and Mike Epps. Mike Epps. Mike Epps. I heard him and Wanda Sykes. They have a new show that they're working on. I love Wanda. I Wanda's Wanda. Super fucking Wanda dope. might actually be in my top five. Okay, so she's your fifth. Yeah, she's my fifth. I was oh, sorry, cat. <laughs> God, I love you, Cat. Wanda's in there. Man, uh, yeah, they, they're working on a new show together. She, they're another 
man, it's so many the the ecosystem of comedy mm -hmm. has has evolved and grown into such a dynamic force now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like y'all like like having y'all hip hop ninety six moment. Yeah. I think I think and I hope this is true, but I think I feel on comedy right now this sense that like, oh, people are listening to us. Right. And uh we also are in a moment where we have to defend what we're doing. You know, mm. like we have to, there's a lot of people coming out saying like, you can't tell jokes, you can't tell jokes about this, you can't tell jokes about that. Yeah. And it's like, no, 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 don't tell us. Right. We've always been the ones to say whatever we wanted to say. What's the it's on joke? us to make the punchline good. The toughest joke to get across. Like when I say that, like who's the worst group to offend? You know what I'm saying? Well, I got, I mean, my new set right now, it's a lot of, you know, and I have a lot of white women who are my fans, and as to be expected, I think. You do what I'm and, saying. Uh, <laughs> but they, uh, you know, like, a lot of my jokes right now are like, I want women to get ahead, but. What? And, what? I mean, that's all the, you know, like, that's where the jokes come in. That's where it's like, but I'm like, I'm trying to. As a woman, to, I think you can say that. And, it's like a black man getting up there saying nigga, 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 nigga. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and, and, you know, like, I'm trying to I'm trying to tell these women, like, where they're going wrong, but being funny at the well, same where time. where are they going wrong? Oh, there's so many. I mean, it's a lot. They're going wrong almost every direction. I mean, but, but, why, but how? Like, how can they correct it? What are the things that need to be reeled in? I think the biggest thing is that white women need to stop thinking they're the victim. Mm, what if they're victims? If they're victims <laughs> of like a certain crime, <laughs> then for that I moment. suppose for that moment you can be a victim. <laughs> but for the most part, it's like, bitch, stand up. <laughs> I say this all the time. Man. I mean, this is part of the joke, but I say like, white women are like a cat stuck in a tree. Mm. The fire department's going to come, but he's going to be like, I feel like you should be able to get down. You know what I'm saying? Damn. And then the my sorry not to keep talking no, about my on, own man, jokes. Come on, come on. I mean, uh, but men need all of this information. In the in the last in my last special, I talk about how we're the most we're the most privileged victim. Like it was hard to start a rev. The smartest thing white men did mm. is they kept us comfortable. because oh. it's almost impossible to start a revolution from under a duvet. <laughs> you can't. You're cozy. What are you gonna do? You're cozy. I'll do that shit later. Yeah, yeah. It's just. You know, I mean, you have a black lady raising your baby. You're cozy under a blanket. You know what? Now that's that. That now that I think is probably like that is a dynamic that isn't discussed enough. Mm -hmm. Like when white women were considered to be well to do and rich, they would have uh, 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 a a a I don't I guess a a mamie or mm -hmm. whatever they called them, that was a nanny that would take care of the child, nurture, even sometimes breastfeeding mm -hmm. the child. Now, I think every woman has everything that they need to get whatever guy, whatever situation, whatever job, whatever life they want for themselves. They have it. It's just like, what are you willing to sacrifice to achieve it? But a lot of women don't understand what they have. Mm. A lot of women don't understand that they're like, oh, I'm the prize. I mean, I think the woman is the prize. She is. Yeah. I 100% believe that, but they don't believe that. Why not? I think it's been beat out in society that beat like, out. well, I mean, not what physically. Mean? But <laughs> like, it's like there's just been this narrative in society that like women have to continually get better to impress men when it's like, every. First of all, we don't understand what men are into. Men will go after a lot more. What do you mean? There are men. Every women think they have to be this certain type, this certain politeness, this certain oh, made upness. Yeah. And when you're like, oh no no, but there's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's a difference. Okay, so there's a going out tonight and had a bunch of drinks, having fun kind of standard. And there's a want to get an apartment which you take you to meet my mom kind of standard. Mm -hmm. And not often do they intercede. You dig <laughs> what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, so I think 
things like that, taboo topics, like what they say, a freak in the streets, and no, no, lady in the streets and a freak in the sheets. Mm -hmm. That's like every man's kind of best case scenario, a woman who could be upstanding and then live a double life and come home, put on red spandex. Mm -hmm. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what, like and there's... do Eddie Murphy's whole special. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, that's kind of what everyone wants. That's just like, you know what I'm saying? For a woman, a woman, it, I, I would imagine that they want someone who's assertive, powerful, but doesn't use any of their strengths against them. Mm -hmm. um, and, but, except during sex. Mm -hmm. So... Everybody is going from wanting one thing, but then wanting it to be dumped on its head in a different case study. Yeah, like you want one thing, and then when you're in public, it's like, uh, let's yeah. pretend we're different I people. don't want people to know what I want. Yeah. <laughs> I want to disclose my filth. Yeah. You know, by having a proper tie. Yeah. <laughs> I will wear a skirt with a hem that's long enough. <laughs> and a slip if necessary <laughs> to throw them off of my trail. I'm like, so, come on, you're a dirty, dirty slut. You dirty, you dirty, <laughs> dirty slut, you. And I get... But come kiss me yeah, on my cheek. We're all playing this weird game, you know? Like, we're right? all playing this push and pull. And, and how long are we going to keep this shit up? I don't know. I don't, it makes it a lot harder. I mean, is it so? So, how do you feel about marriage? Is marriage a big deal for you? Um, I don't know. You know, I think. Uh, are you at the age where mom's like, "Yo, when are you gonna get married? When are you gonna give me I some think, grandkids?" I think my mom gave up on that part of me a while ago. Oh. <laughs> well, good for her. I'm gonna grab some. Too. Yeah, you absolutely. Um, I think. You know, for me, it's like I would only ever get married if, and it's the reason I don't date a lot either, is because I, I don't, I don't want to settle for anybody, and I want someone who is, uh, doing at least as well as me, and if not better. Let's see why. Well, see why. See, money I'm might a, be your thing. No, no, money's not my thing. It's you know I'm, what I'm saying, but I'm you might be the you might be the the one to get the money. But he might have the ideas mm. to add to what you have, and like we were saying, well, separate, I don't need but someone to add to my ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do uh, all the thinking here, mate. <laughs> I want someone that's good in their Just own right. Just stand there and take your shirt off. Yeah, <laughs> I want someone that like I, you know, I I know. I have a particular skill and a particular talent. Uh -huh. I want someone that is just as good as what they do okay, as you want I am as what I am. An accountant. No. <laughs> I want someone who is, you know, just also amazing. Like, I want someone who's amazing. I want someone who... This sweeps you off your feet. Yeah. Okay, so if someone like, you know, let's say you say you're going to Denver. You go to Denver, you meet a guy... You, not, not, not saying you meet a guy. You bump into a guy mm -hmm. that you've known for quite some time, but never really, like, you know what I'm saying, engaged in that kind of way. And at your show, he says, hey, listen, meet me here. Mm -hmm. Gives you an address with a key. You go there. You get there. Look at you. You smiling already. <laughs> <laughs> you blessed but I'm also so, like, oh, you I'm also like, me. wait, is it a house key? Is it a hotel key? Uh, Am hotel I going to get murdered? Hotel <laughs> key. It's a hotel key. Okay, so you get there, use the key, walk in, candlelights, trail of rose petals, mm -hmm. and then it leads you to a bed. And when you get there, he's there on his knee with an engagement ring and say, will you marry me? What you going to do? Wait, how? I've known this guy? You've known this guy for a few years, but you've never, like, you know, you've been... You've been cordial, you like each other, maybe flirted here and there, uh -huh. but never really did anything. Maybe went out on a group, like, you know, in a, yeah, yeah, yeah. a group night, but never in any one-on-one -on -one dating. This is the first advance he's made. What do you do? If I felt a certain, if I felt the way about him and he did all that. Yeah. Yes, 100%. Yes. Yeah. Because you know you're getting, you, you, you're getting butterflies from the elevator walking down the hall. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? You get... The full rose petal candlelight treatment, and he probably has some. Let me see. What would you like to hear? Let me think. Let me think. Uh, <laughs> I'll say Ed Sheeran. No. No. 
Come on, just because I'm a redhead. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. It was the ginger. <laughs> no, nah, but Ed Sheeran has some very good songs. He's got some good songs. Ed Sheeran has some very good songs. I'm not so what, that white oh, of a Chris girl. You're a Chris Brown kind of girl. <laughs> you're a Chris Brown. Okay. Let's meet somewhere in the middle yeah, there. <laughs> just lift it up and put it to the side, partner. Um, nah, I'm just joking. But you would, so you do have that kind of spontaneity with. I do, you. like, I, you know, like, and I've met guys before where I'd be like, oh man, this is a guy who, if he said, let's go, let's get married now, I'd do it. Whoa, did you tell him that? No. See, that's the problem. I know, I know, I was too scared. See, no, man, that that was that was the. That was your destiny. I know. You got to grab it by the horns. <laughs> or the pussy. <laughs> <laughs> so we won't catch you on ChristianMingle.com, I guess. I think they kicked me off. They, you think so? <laughs> no, nah, not them. They're the most lenient of them all. You know what I'm saying? Man, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Thank and, you for and, having me. And sharing this moment, man. It would not have been the same without you. Uh, I can't wait to see your second special. Thank you. Scheme. Scheme. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and the the your first special. What is I get the name of the Joke special. Show. Joke show and the sketch comedy show. The break. The break. Uh I thoroughly enjoy you every time I see you on stage or even just kicking shit with the guys, man, at same, the bar. Same. Um, and you're welcome here. You're a welcome guest at Expeditiously anytime. Thank you so much. I here had a blast. You're the best. Michelle Wolf, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. This has been Expeditiously. Watch your favorite episodes of Expeditiously right now on the Expeditiously YouTube page.